In this video, I'm going to be going over 10 practice questions for Security Plus. Now, in particularly, this is going to be for SYO 601, but you could use them if you're studying for older Security Plus exams also. Now, my name is Andrew Ramdial, and I'm one of the instructors here at Technical Institute of America. We do a lot of live classes, boot camps, and we also have a lot of e-learning materials that you can find on the internet. All right, let's go ahead and knock out these 10 questions. All right, so let's get started here. Question number one. An organization has noticed that a user has accidentally sent a customer information to another customer. What could the organization have used to stop this? A, data encryption. B, data loss prevention. C, honeypots. D, firewalls. Now, answer here, hopefully you guys got this one, was B, data loss prevention. Now, why exactly is it data loss prevention? Well, first of all, DLP software, like Semantics DLP, what this does is that you basically install it on your network and your systems, and it stops basically PI information, personally identifiable information, from leaving your network. So a DLP software, like if somebody tries to send a social security number or credit card, DLP will say, hey, you shouldn't be doing that. Now, some people said, hey, could it have been data encryption? Well, data encryption is not going to help you here because the people within the organization probably already have access to the information. So the data had to be decrypted for them to even access it. What you're really trying to do is really stop them from sending that data out is really what the question wants. Okay, question number two. An organization is planning to deploy an application they developed in-house onto cloud service. They do not want to manage the underlying operating system and they're just looking to run their application on the server. What cloud model should they select? A, P, A, A, S, B, I, A, A, S, C, S, A, A, S, and D, X, A, A, S. Hopefully you guys remember what those uh, acronyms mean. Okay, so the answer here, hopefully you guys got it, is going to be Platform as a Service. So Platform as a Service is when the cloud provider basically gives you the operating system and the things that are needed to run your application. So for example, if you go to AWS and you create an account and you set up an Elastic Beanstalk is what they have, so they call their platform as a service. You can go in there and set up a server that comes with Linux, it comes with MySQL, it'll come with PHP, uh, and then you just put your web application on it and you're all good to go. So there's nothing there to manage except just your application. All right, question number three. An organization is selecting a redundant site in case their main data center goes down. The site needs to be up within a few days but it does not need to have all of the specialized equipment the organization uses. Which of the following sites best fits these requirements? A, hot site. B, call center. C, warm site. D, redundant site. All right, hopefully you guys got this one. And the answer is going to be a warm site. So there's a couple of things here in the question. You notice that the question does say within a few days is one of the keywords. And it does not need to have all the specialized equipment. So with that, you know it's not a hot site. So a hot site is going to come with all of that specialized equipment. All you got to do is restore your data. It may take a day or so. A redundant site is basically has all your equipment and your data. And basically, you can get you can get it up generally instantly if one of your main site goes down. And this one, they're saying, you know what? We don't need all the equipment. And if it comes up in a few days. So warm sites will contain some of the equipment, not all. You got to bring some of your specialized equipment. This, of course, might take a few days to get. Practice question four. When a user is being authenticated by the company's internal systems, the systems check to ensure that they have an IP address from within the network. What kind of authentication attribute is this? A, something you can do. B, something you exhibit. C, something you know. And D, somewhere you are. And the answer here is going to be all right, hopefully you guys selected that somewhere you are. Now, this is going to be a type of a location-based authentication because you have to be from within. So that means you have to have an IP address from within that particular network. Um, the others there are going to be different forms of authentication method, but not particularly this one. Question five. An organization biometric device checks for the color patterns of a user eyes. What type of biometric device is this? Retina scanner? Iris scanner, eye scanner, or facial recognition? The answer here is going to be an iris scanner. Now, an iris scanner really look for the color patterns, uh, color patterns of the iris itself. What retinas do, and a lot of people confuse this, you see retina scanners, they look 
for the patterns of blood vessels in the retina itself. Remember those terms because on your exam, sometimes people really confuse retina scanners and iris. The easiest way to remember, remember iris scanner looks for color and retina will look for the patterns of blood vessel. It's an easy way of remembering that. Question number six. An organization would like to use one username and password to log into multiple different websites across the organization. What type of authentication method should this should should be implemented? Directory services A, B, federation, C, static codes, D, multi-factor authentication. All right, answer. Hopefully you guys selected the correct answer is going to be B, federation. So if you if you go into the question, it says one username and password to log into multiple different websites. Federation, such as when you're using technology like SAML, uh, what Federation does is basically allow you to use one username and password to log into multiple different web applications. All right, question number seven. An organization is building an overall physical security strategy. Which of the following could be implemented to stop intruders from getting in? A, signage, B, alarms, C, cameras, and D, security guards. The answer here is going to be, hopefully you guys got this one. I thought this was pretty easy. Security guards. Now, security guards are considered what are known as preventive controls. Preventive controls can actually stop some somebody from coming in. You see a sign, you can put a sign that says don't enter, but the sign doesn't have hands, or so, so does the alarm or the cameras. They don't have hands to come on and stop, a, physically stop a person like a security guard could. But sign, but signs, alarms, and cameras could deter people, could scare them off, but not prevent them. Question number eight. An embedded system maker has created an internal chip that includes a CPU, RAM, and the firmware. What would this chip be called? A, system on a chip. B, chip on a system. C, all in one chip. Or D, CPU chip. The answer here is going to be a system on a chip. Now, system on a chip, are you find these in a lot of small devices. They're basically devices uh, where one chip, the CPU, contains all the other main components needed to run that particular system. Question number nine. The security analyst has analyzed the log files and has noticed that a hacker was able to sniff the organization data while it was being transmitted from the server to the workstation. Which of the following protocols could the organization have implemented to mitigate this? A. SSL, B. FTP, C. WEP, and or D. HTTP. Hopefully you guys got this one. I thought this one was pretty easy. You guys should all know that SSL is what we're going to use to encrypt data. Now. SSL, you could, SSL encapsulate all the protocols like HTTP to have HTTPS or FTP such as FTPS. Now, FTP is in plain text. Web, even though web is encrypted, it is crackable. If you took my Security Plus class, you would see how easy that was to crack. Uh, so we do have a lab in that that does that. Uh, and HTTP is just plain text. And finally, number 10, security administrators created a text file on his desktop named passwords.txt. contains fake user... It contains fake username and passwords to trick hackers. This is an example of A, honeypot, B, honey net, C, honey files, D, a sinkhole. And the answer is going to be a honey file. So honey files are basically fake files that you put onto your network that you're hoping that attackers go after those instead of the actual real one. And that brings me to an end on this one. Okay, guys, that was the end of today's session. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. Uh, you know what? Subscribe to our channel if you... If you really enjoyed today's content, we will be producing a lot more content like this. I'm going to be doing a lot more videos. We're going to do a lot more practice questions almost every week. Not just for Security Plus, but we're going to do them for A+. Plus. We're doing them for Network Plus, CCNA, and all your other IT certifications that we can probably think about. Say, so, hey, give me a like on this video. Leave in the comments below which question you thought was pretty difficult or which one you thought was pretty easy or what type of questions you'd like, you'd like for us to add. And I'll see you in the next video.